All right, guys, today I want to give you a tour of my Garage Gym 2.0. We moved in here a few months ago. I had it set up a certain way. And then over the past few months, we've reconfigured this a bit. And I want to show you everything I have that helps me stay fit and at the top of my game. Let's start outside. All right, outside here, we've got the sauna and the ice barrel. This is the ice barrel 500. While we traveled in our RV, I had the ice barrel 400 and 300, which was great for travel. The Ice Barrel 500 is great as a permanent fixture as part of my setup here. So we've got the lid on here. This is part of my daily routine. Every morning I get up, start my coffee, come out here, get in this Ice Barrel for three minutes. I do this every single day that I'm home. When I'm traveling, I don't get to do it. When I'm home, that's part of my morning routine. Super simple, in and out in three minutes and move on with my day. This is the most insulated ice barrel that they make. And what I love about it is that even in this Alabama heat right now, the top of this is hot, but the water is staying at 47 degrees. And I know that because I have a chiller and if it gets above 47 degrees, that chiller is gonna kick on. So right now the water is just running, but the chiller isn't running and the chiller doesn't have to overwork while I've got this. If you use ice in this thing, the ice will last a lot longer, the temperature will stay cooler, and it's just great to have this level of insulation. I love the stairs, I love how deep this is. It's really easy to get in there and have that water level be right at my neck. Next, if we come around here, connected to the ice barrel, I have the penguin chiller. It circulates the water full time, and when that water temperature for me gets above 46 degrees, 47 degrees, it'll kick on and keep that water temperature down where I want it. It also comes with its own filter, so that's gonna keep sediments in the bottom of the ice barrel from getting into this machine. And you want that. You want this to have just the cleanest water coming through it. I change the water on the ice barrel about once a month anyway, but with this chiller circulating the water, I don't think I need to change it that often. I like clean water. I like to keep it super hygienic. All right, next, we've got the sauna. This sauna is by Redwood Outdoors. This is a six person barrel sauna with a porch. I typically use this every day. At night, I'll preheat it to 180, 210 degrees, get in for about 20 minutes. So I'll actually cool off just sitting on the benches, chilling out. I imagine when it's 100 degrees outside at night, I'm probably gonna get in the ice barrel after the sauna at night just to cool off that temperature. But on Sundays, I actually do two mega sessions in the sauna. I do 30 minutes and I'll do a five minute break. Sometimes I'll jump in the ice barrel, come back in for another 30 minutes, and jump in the ice barrel and call that done. I'll do that in the morning and I'll do that in the evening and it feels great and it significantly promotes recovery. There's all kinds of benefits to doing that kind of sauna protocol. I'll have a link up here that talks about how I use this sauna in my daily routine. Over on this side is where I have all of the electrical set up for the sauna and the ice barrel. I had an electrician come out and extend the power from the house underground to this pedestal. So this has a 220 connection to the sauna, which is necessary. And you can't do that yourself. You have to have an electrician do that. This is a light switch for the light in the sauna. I also have a standard outlet that allows me to plug in the chiller, just all condensed in one pedestal right here. Love it. Again, that was really a nice thing to have an electrician do. That's the only extra expense on top of an actual sauna is that you really need an electrician to connect this thing. Let's go inside and check out the garage now. All right, so first we're just gonna do a quick overview, then we'll get into the details of what we have in this garage. So first thing is I have most of the garage floor covered with stall mats. That makes it really easy to move around, set up workouts, tear down, really, really simple. Around the edges I have you know, GHD, I have machines, I have barbells, trying to set all of this up so that I can maximize the floor space for training. I have my, I have rowers, jerk blocks, a bench up on the wall. So again, I'm trying to get everything out of the way to maximize the amount of space I have on the floor and I'm able to pull out anything I need for specific workouts and then put that away again. So I've got that floor space open. Also in this garage, the car does come in and park in here. It's a Tesla, which is great. I don't have to worry about oil leaks or drips or anything like that. That comes in here, it fits, and we plug it in every night. Now, let's get into the details of what we have throughout this garage. This is gonna get really detailed because I love talking about this stuff. Over here, this is just a general like storage rack from Home Depot. This is not a perfect scenario. So I wanna change this down the road, but this is what I have for now. It's not super sturdy, but I'll show you how I make it sturdy, okay? Up top, I have all the wall balls. Gotta watch out for those because they will fall and crush your head if you're not careful. I have a 20 pounder, I have a 30 pounder, 14, and like a six pounder up there. I don't use the six pounder, but the kids like it. So it's kind of fun. Hanging out the side, I have a weight belt. Is that what I call that? I think it's called a weight belt. But this is for like weighted dips, weighted pull-ups. I have various bands that I might use. I have a spare beaded rope, and I have my crossover symmetry attached to this. This is a nice part of this because I can just attach it right to the shelf, but I have 
crossover symmetry, which I use prior to every workout. In a storage container in here, I have extra lifting belts. I have extra rings. I have extra chalk. We've got ab mats. So not just your standard ab mat, but if we're doing a ton of ab mat sit-ups, we're going to use the Weisscrack ab mat from Rogue Fitness. This is going to keep you from getting that raspberry on your behind. I've got extra tape. This is the Jaybird tape. I just use this on my thumbs. I find this to be absolutely the best. Jaybird. I just get this from Amazon. Jaybird. There's other tape brands out there. This works for me. And I have light dumbbells. I also forgot up here, I do have, this is an air cover. This is like a fan cover for the Echo Bike. It's great because it keeps the air from hitting you in the face, but it also makes the calories come easier. So you really don't want this on there if you're training. But if it's freezing cold in the garage, just pop this thing on. It'll make your life a little bit better. Now I have the dumbbells that I primarily use. 25s, 35s, 50s. And that's all sitting on top of Dumbbells that I don't use that often, like my 60s, 65s, 55s. We go down low. You can see down here I have like 70s, which I do use, and they're accessible. 75s, 80s, 85s. I don't use those very much. And on top of those, I have metal plates stacked up. These are 25-pound metal plates stacked up to the base of this rack to actually hold the weight of all these dumbbells. So these dumbbells aren't resting on the rack because it's not strong enough. They're resting on a rack that is supported by all the dumbbells underneath. So if I have to use my 85 pound dumbbells, I got a lot of work to do to get that out. So I'll probably just not use them here. I'll use the heavier dumbbells at the gym until Rogue decides to send me a rack. Like, hey, anybody want to send me a good rack or create a solution for this? Like, I'm game, let's do it. Hey, on that note, this is a good time to say that I bought all of this equipment. This is not some outfitted gym that I just got donated. Like, I, I wish, that I had some things. Like I would love an assault runner. That's really the only thing I want. Everywhere around here has like straight up hills or straight down hills. So if I wanna run in a workout, I have to go to the gym for that or I have to run straight down our driveway, straight up a hill. It does, it's not perfect. Like I could do it, but I would love an assault runner in this garage. I just can't quite afford that right now. So I gotta wait till I can buy one. But I have bought everything else in this gym with hard earned dollars and cents. Right here, we've got the 150 pound sandbag. This is a great spot for it. It doesn't stabilize this or anything. It's just it's not a good spot to put it anywhere. So it just goes right there. Behind it, I have a 53 pound kettlebell, 24, I guess that's a 26 pound kettlebell, 35 pound kettlebell. You could put kettlebells underneath the GHD all day long. It's a great spot to store them. This is the Rogue GHD. I think it's the Abram II. This is a great GHD. And I've used a lot of GHDs. I've used a lot of crappy GHDs. I think when it comes to GHDs, you have to bite the bullet and just buy this one. Again, not sponsored in any way. This is the one. It fits right. It feels right. Other GHDs actually kind of hurt my back. This is great. So I'll try to save any GHD work for when I'm working out in this garage because this thing is a workhorse. Now, if there's GHDs in the quarterfinals or semifinals, this will come with me to the gym. That's fine. I'll bring this for those qualifiers for sure. Moving this way, I have all the plates. And again, this is not the perfect solution. This is just what I have for now. These are the high templates. I have everything I need for lifting in these high templates, 10s, 15s, 25s, 35s, 45s, everything I need there. And I use these predominantly because they're just so versatile. They're so rugged. I can use them on floor mats. I can use them out in the driveway if I wanted to. All right, down here, I've got my change plates. These are all just standard rogue change plates. If I scoot back, you can see back here I have stacked up standard Rogue plates. These are plates that are a bit more dead stop. So if they drop on the ground, like they, they don't bounce as much. There are definitely workouts where I don't want plates to be bouncing around. Like if I'm doing something like Grace for time and I'm dropping that barbell from overhead, I want those dead stop plates to stop the barbell. So I happen to have some of this from a gym that I owned previously. I had high temp plates in the gym. I had dead stop plates at home and now I have all of them. <laughs> I have plenty of weight. So multiple people can do workouts in my garage at the same time. We can use high temp, we can use standard plates, dead stop, whatever we need we've got in plates. These are small barbells. These are for my boys. This is a five pound barbell for my youngest. This is a 25 pound barbell. I meant to, I meant to buy a 15 pound. It's accidentally 25, but that's what my boys use for training. If we come over here, I've got a couple of heavy kettlebells, 71 pounds, 32 kilograms. I keep these over here, and I'll tell you why in just a second. But that's 
a couple of heavy kettlebells that I can use. On my wall, I have all of my barbells. This is a barbell that I don't use much, so it's actually more of a storage rack right now. Uh, I do have a weight vest, a 20 pound weight vest, my barbell apparel flag. Shout out to Barbell Apparel for the best workout clothes on the market. Beat them up. If you beat them up and you tear them, whatever, they'll replace them. Repair them. No questions. All right, then I have my barbells. Then I have these two barbells, which I use a lot. This is my Olympic barbell. This is a standard Rogue Ohio bar. These are, this is a female barbell. This is my wife's barbell. And then this is an extra barbell in case I need it. 45 pounds, 45 pounds, 45 pounds. 35 pounds, 35 pounds. I have an extra weight vest over here that is empty because those weights are in the rucksack. So I've got 20 pounds in this ruck. I have another 20 pounds in this backpack. So when my wife and I go rucking, she wears one, I wear the other, and they currently reside on my squat stands. Let's talk about those squat stands, by the way. These squat stands, these aren't super expensive. They're also not very heavy. So if I move these out into the middle of the floor, Let's say I'm getting ready for squats. Here's a little tip for you. When you're the only one that uses these, you can mark your height on these with marker so you know how high your squat stand needs to be. That comes from 10 years of not having that marked. I literally marked it last week. All right, so this is the squat rack, but I can tip this pretty easy. And that's where the kettlebells come in. Put a kettlebell on top of that and if I'm bringing that barbell in with heavy squats, it is very stable and not going anywhere. So that's why the kettlebells stay out and are very accessible because I have them on the base of the squat rack, which comes out at least twice a week if I'm training in my garage. For front squats, back squats, overhead squats, bench, all that. I like these because I can bring them in, take them out, as opposed to moving a huge rack around or having a rack that takes up a ton of space in the garage. All right, let's move on to the machines. Got the Rogue Echo Bike, Concept 2 Bike Erg, Concept to ski erg, I've got a gymnastics mat. This is for freestanding handstand pushups, handstand pushups against the wall as well. I have a timer so I can time the workouts. I'll normally just use my watch to time workouts, but it's nice to have a timer if there's a couple people working out at the same time. Pull up rig, which will allow me to do pull ups, toes to bar, bar muscle ups. I can do all of that on this. I did not install this myself. I had someone help me install this as well as the rings, which we'll get to. I just wanted to make sure that this was very, very sturdy. When I do bar muscle ups, I created tremendous amount of torque on that bar and like the first time I tested it I was nervous but I've done I don't know a couple hundred now so we are good on this wall. Behind me I have plexiglass this is here so that when I do handstand push-ups I don't mess up my wall which is really easy to do and this was just inexpensive at Home Depot put it up and you could see my skid marks on there from my heels from doing handstand push-ups already it's a really nice thing to have. I forgot to show you my wall ball target which is up here, this is one of the things I have to do. I do have to move the ski erg if I want to do wall balls, but no big deal. That's a 10 foot line. So everyone around here does 10 foot wall balls. All right, over here, I kind of have my junk table. I've got a 20, 24, 30 inch plyo box here. I have a smaller plyo box over here. I have a garage fan, which is going to become essential this summer, obviously. This is a vibrating foam roller. I'm testing out a red light therapy device. Pretty cool so far. I have extra shoes back here on the counter, extra lifters, extra grips, heavy ropes in here as well. And my whiteboard, which I've had forever. Like this is, this is like eight years old. I have two Sonos speakers. I have one here, one up on top of my jerk blocks over there, which pound out some serious tool when I'm working out. That's pretty much all I listen to if I'm solo. Really, I'll just listen to one song on repeat. So that's fun for everyone else, trust me. Every man's garage needs all the tools. So this is my tool rack. I'm a DeWalt guy, got all the DeWalt stuff and uh, including like chainsaws. So that's super fun. On top of this, I have the extra jerk blocks that I will never use. These are extras because it would just make it way too tall for me, but they're up there. Here I have my actual jerk blocks. So these don't come out that often, but when they do come out for cleans, snatches off the blocks, or if I'm doing jerks on the blocks, it's worth getting them out. Like I really hate moving these around. They take up so much space. Anyone who's had jerk blocks knows that like you almost wish you didn't have them until you use them and you're like, dang it, I'm so glad I have them. So that's me and I do have these. Moving on. All right, next I have two rowers that are hanging from rogue rower hangers. So those are attached to studs. Really great to have that. Again, getting everything off the floor is really nice. So these are simple to pull off 
and get down on the floor for me to train with. Second one, this is a little attachment so I can have my phone on the monitor of the rower if I'm doing something super long and I need to watch a show while I'm doing it. And then I have my bench over here nuzzled next to the mop and all the rakes, all the brooms and stuff like that. But the bench comes out quite often and it's easy to get up and down off of that. And one more piece right here in the middle. We have two things. We have the climbing rope as well as the rings attached to the same beam up top. I don't do these at the same time, obviously. This rope is normally hanging over the pull-up bar. All right, now that I have that pulled out of the way, I can use the rings. These have been tested a dozen times. I do not hit my head on the rope. It's really nice to have both of those here. And when I use the rope for rope climbs, I can pull the rings off to the side and get them out of the way. Just use a band and I actually attach them to the garage door to get them well out of the way. And down on the floor, I have 12 stall mats. In Garage Gym 1.0, we only had six stall mats. And that actually made it really tricky. You couldn't do bar facing burpees unless you were like on a weird diagonal or your feet would fall off. So my recommendation when you're doing a home gym is just get enough floor mats. It's really, really simple. You just go to like your local tractor supply or like feed supply store, they're like $50 each. So I have 12 of them in here that covers the majority of the floor and allows me to just navigate like machines into the floor easily and back off. And I can work out anywhere on this space without having to think about any kind of floor constraints. That's the equipment I have in the garage. The other part of the garage that I really like, that I didn't really show you guys is over here. Behind me, up on the wall, I have all of the banners from all the competitions that I've been in. I have five CrossFit Games banners up there. I have four Legends banners, one MFC, three Wadapalooza. Like, that's really cool to save those. And I haven't had a place for these in years because we've been in an RV. And even before that, I had a garage gym that I didn't have any of this stuff hung in. So, like, one of the first things I did when I painted the garage, got everything set up, is like, I've got to get the banners up. So it is exciting to come out here and, and like reminisce and think about each one of the years that I've been able to compete at the highest level. And they are a little bit of an inspiration for me when I come in here and I'm training up. I really like those. I want as many of those as I can get. Like, let's just cover all of these walls. So that's a Garage Gym 2.0, including the ice barrel and the sauna. If you have any questions about any of this equipment or how I manage my way around this or the stuff I have outside, please leave a comment below. I love answering questions around that. If you're looking for discounts on like the ice barrel or the sauna or some of this equipment, I'll include that in the description below, obviously. And if you're a master's athlete and you're looking for the best training on the planet for master's athletes created by a master's athlete, you should check out Boulder Athlete. And as always, guys, your best days are ahead of you. Get bolder, not older. See ya.